Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. In today's video, we are talking about fine motor, but this time it's for the older kids. This is actually a requested video from one of my subscribers, and I actually have a couple of other videos talking about fine motor activities for older kids. So I'll put those all down below in the description box so you can get even more inspiration. Let's get started with today's ideas. When we talk about fine motor on the Purple Alphabet, we're usually referring to fine motor for the preschool age, the toddler age, even the baby baby age. My children are 9 and 11 and my 11 year old still works on her fine motor skills in order to improve her writing so she doesn't get fatigued. So it is important to kind of keep it up throughout the years and to look for activities that help promote that. So in today's video most of the activities I'm going to show you are probably suited for older kids. I like to say 5, 6 and up. Some of the things I'm going to show you are rated for older kids like this one says ages 8 and up but you can always adapt or find similar items that are more age appropriate if you have a younger child. Definitely go and look at the videos that I'm posting down below for more ideas because I have filled up so many videos on this topic alone. This is a game that I showed in my holiday gift guide. It's called Tumple Mix. It, like I said, it's for ages eight and up. I think it's a great kind of extension activity to your typical Jenga. So they did send this to me for the holiday gift guide, but we're still using it in our house. And so I thought it'd be important to show you in this video. You get different size blocks like you would. So these are your typical like Jenga blocks. We have these that are cubes and then there is, here we go, the shape too, which is like a rectangular prism. So you get three different types of shapes. You also get these little buttons here in white, red, and yellow. And then we have a set of cards over here. Now I demonstrated this whole game in the other video. So I'll just kind of briefly explain it here. So we always start with a base. Here is our base block. And then we would flip a card over or the first First person will flip the card over and it will tell you which block to use and how much time you have to set it onto the base. So this says four seconds. There is also an app that will do the timing for you. So if you prefer to use the app, you can use the app. So we'd find that block and we place it onto our base wherever we'd like it to be. And then it's the next person's turn. So if you're able to put the block onto your base, then you receive points for that. If it falls or the timer runs out, then you don't get any points. As you go through these cards, you'll notice that there's one side of the brick that is not colored. There's two white sides and one colored side. That's the side that you're supposed to put onto your tower going through. So as you go through the cards, it will become increasingly more difficult. I'm gonna go center <laughs> to add on more bricks. One more, there we go. Man, I am not having any luck with making it easy. Ta -da. Now eventually you're going to turn up a card like this and there's a little button or what they call a tump on here and that's to be added onto your tower. So I have a white one here and I have five seconds to place it onto my tower. Now these little guys, they mean something. The white one means you put it on any part of the structure, including the base. And if it's placed on there, that means you can't use that portion of the brick. It's out of place. So if I put it here, nobody can put anything on top of there. If you get the red tump and you place it on a brick, that means, let's take my white one off here, just for sample. You can't use any part of this entire brick plus any brick that is touching it below it, directly touching it. And then our yellow one, if you put this on a structure, that just means the entire brick is out of play. So you can still use ones that are touching this brick as you're building. So your structure will continue to grow and grow and grow. Some will fall off, you won't get points for them, but for everything you do, you do get points and everything's timed. So you have a lot of fine motor balance work going on and of course strategy because you're playing with other players. Once all of these bricks are gone out of the box you tally up the points to find out the winner. So I just think this is a great take and an interesting way to work on the fine motor skills. Very similar to some other brick building games like a Jenga but it's more complex in the strategy and I like all of these different little buttons that you put on here and you won't be able to do things as you build and then it's more of a point based versus if it falls down you just lose right. So if things fall down that's okay you just continue on playing. I'll make sure to put links to everything that I'm showing you today down in my description box. I do have an Amazon store where I've been putting a lot of fine motor activities in there too. So you might find other ideas other than the ones that I'm showing you in this video. 
This one is a sticker by number. And if you watch the Purple Alphabet, you already know when they have the sticker books at Dollar Tree, I'm all about it. But that's more for counting numbers 1 to 50, 1 to 100. This one is for adults is how they marketed it. But you can use it for older kids as well. This is the Brain Games. I got the sticker by number nature set. So you can see all the different pictures that they have here that you can make. Flowers, fish, pineapple. <laughs> and it's a similar concept. It's taking stickers and placing them on a pre-printed picture to make the picture. The only thing about this is that the pieces are smaller and they're oddly shaped too. There's lots of different shapes in here. So you really have to pay attention to how you're placing it on here. They do pull out. So these have little perforated edges right here on the side. So you can pull it out and do an individual page. And there are smaller ones and they go up to more complex ones. So here's like a flower that has a lot more than this one right here. So you can kind of pick one that you have time for or the patience for to complete them. It's kind of a really good mindfulness activity. And then back in the back is where you'll find all of your sticker sheets and they're all labeled and numbered by page. So this is page two, page three. So you can find the page that works with your picture and go ahead and take it out. So peeling the stickers off is great fine motor work. And then actually placing them in each one of these slots is also good fine motor work. I like this because it's a great travel one. Take with you, take in the car, restaurant activities. Remember I used to make all those restaurant activity kit videos. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I'll put it up here in the corner. There's a whole place playlist of restaurant activity videos that I have. This would be one of those items that I put in there or even an activity kit video. They're recommending this one for ages seven and up. And if you don't like the nature one, there are so many different ones that I found and I'll link them down below too. So you can find one that you like. This one is a fidget based and I actually have these from a video I did on our favorite fidgets, I believe. I'll have to find that one and put it up here in the corner too. If you're into fidgets and using them for learning, that'd be a really good video to watch. This is a set that came with nine and they are magnetic rings. There's a little magnet in there and they actually, it's hard to tell, but they spin individually and they all come in different colors. I actually saw a really good TikTok. I think it was an occupational therapist TikTok that was showing how to use these for fine motor. And you can put one on each finger. Actually, I got one too many. One on each finger and work to pull them apart. And because they're magnetic and stick to each other, there's some resistance. They also used it for finger isolation. Like that. They also used it by manipulating one to go around the other and using different fingers. You can also use one of them and do the same thing with your thumb and other various finger exercises. So even just kind of fiddling around with it and moving, like I'm using three and I'm moving that one all the way through using different fingers, manipulating it. So you can come up with a couple of different exercises, but it's just working that hand strength using these rings. And it's not so tough that it's hard to do. I think that's also important to note. It's like they're not stuck on there and you're really trying to get them off. It's really easy to do. And then they're also a great fidget toy. <laughs> so you can just move them in your finger and they're small enough that they're not a distraction. This next one I'm gonna take you upstairs is actually the one that inspired the whole video. People had a lot of questions about this one. So I'm gonna take you upstairs to our bedroom where we have all of the supplies for it. All right, we're upstairs now because this is what I came up for. It's our jewelry making things. Now I know a lot of you probably already think, okay, yeah, jewelry making. I get it. Actually, I'm going to turn the camera off. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's hard to get this down with one hand. What I'm wanting to show you and what kind of resulted in this whole entire video were these bracelets. Now we were making bracelets and I showed you guys using crystal beads. My daughter is so over making bracelets with plastic cheap beads that they'd make for kids, right? So what we did inside this box is on TikTok, because <laughs> take not TikTok made me buy it, right? I went on and found some shops who are selling crystal beads, all different kinds of stones, and I bought a whole bunch. This is before Christmas. And my daughter really, really seemed to enjoy making bracelets using these. 
versus all of the plastic beads that you'd find in the store. So I'm not going to mention all the TikTok shop owners because I actually, as you can see, purchased several times in several different ones. But I just wanted to show you that, that they're available. Make sure you're buying from someone reputable. This is how they come. So what you do is you choose which beads you want. You buy them in what's called bowls. These are the ones from a most recent order. And they scoop them for you live on TikTok. And they have all kinds of deals. So like one bag is about $12 or so, depending. And I got several bowls during a New Year's sale for buy one, get one free. So that's why I have so many. When you do that, they also give you freebies. That's what's inside this package. And in the freebies, there's string in here to make your bracelets. There's little jewelry findings to make the spacers. So as you can see, in this bracelet right here there's little spacers and those came as free gifts and then there's a little string too that they send you so that you can actually do a full bracelet you can do a basic bracelet like this with no spacers with all of these supplies and it's just a matter of stringing them on and then tying the string and it became so popular in our house that we've just decided to do all the things so that's all you need is just some beads you can even just buy one bowl this was, I think, like $12 plus $4 shipping, although I got so much I didn't pay for shipping. And then you get the string to go with it and you're set and you're done. Now, if you wanna get fancy, like we did, you can invest in a case to store your beads. That's what I did, I got this case. This is actually a case I used for magnetic letters a long time ago. And then you can invest in something like these jewelry boards where it just has these little places on here that tell you the different sizes and you can put your beads on the jewelry board to design them which is what she really loves she loves designing and so she'll maybe put some beads here in the center and then pull them out and, and do all kinds of different designs until she finds what she likes and then she'll string them onto her bracelet they even have these at Dollar Tree, which is the same thing, just much smaller. And so she was using this for a long time and I got that at Dollar Tree, but you can get the larger ones on Amazon. Also find a different spacer. So here's a package of all the different spacers in different colors, little circles and stars. These were um, not purchased off of TikTok. So I can put a link for those for you if you're interested in what we have. This is a package of beads from Amazon. I will link this one too. So the, the beads will come in different sizes. I think these are five. This one I'm wearing is 10, which I think is too big for children. This one right here is um, an eight millimeter, and I think this is five. Let me show you the difference. All right, so you can see 10, eight is the purple, and then these green ones are five. So the ones on Amazon are much smaller. I like the eight, but for kids, eight and five would also be really good sizes. So because of that, I will link the beads that I found on Amazon and they come in this little case already. So you can see how I'm using my fingers to pick up each individual bead. That's what makes it fine at motor work because these beads, you really need some good muscle control and then in stringing them. So it's like we would do with kids and Play-Doh and stringing beads when they were preschoolers. It's the same thing, just elevated and you have a really pretty result afterwards. So these are the smaller ones and they're gonna also require that fine muscle control, especially picking them up and stringing them. One last mention would be charms, which has been something really fun that she's enjoyed too. So a lot of them come with free charms. I think some of these are my fee charms, but you can also find these charms at Michael's. And then I did find some at Amazon too. So I will link the charms. Really fun and honestly, you guys, we love these much better than we do any of the plastic beads that we get by far have really sparked her interest and like i said you guys were asking about it which is the whole reason why i made this whole entire video how do we do this and to actually make the bracelet very simple just start off like this simply beating them on the string design the colors and the pattern you want and then if you wanted to upgrade add in spacers to make it even extra fancy and that's all we did it's that simple and pretty i'll link it all down below this next one is called punch needle or punch needle art and it was something we tried just on a whim this was a birthday present for my 11 year old and we decided to just give it a shot to see if she liked it and then since she ended up liking it i ended up getting her two more kits 
I think this one has some flowers on it and some beach designs. But the first one she did was this ocean wave scene with the sun. Comes with everything you need in the kit. And this was something completely unlike we've done before. The instructions and then the yarn is all, the yarn's all mixed up because we're actually done with this one. So don't let that be deceiving, but it comes neatly wound up. All the colors that you need to complete the project. And this is actually extras. So I'm kind of trying to decide what to do with this right now. Then it also comes with your punch needle and this is the tool you'll use. And apparently there's a lot of different tools that you can use with punch needle art. I had no idea. It's like a whole thing. And it comes with this threader, long threader here. And let's see, here is also, um, it's like a little plastic safety needle, which is kind of nice. So you can thread all of your yarn. Then it comes with the canvas. Here's one that we've already done. Comes with this canvas and then the hoop, right? So you put it into the hoop and there's a pattern printed on there already. Let me see if there's one in this other package. It's hard to tell because these are all <laughs> sealed pretty tightly. The pattern is already printed. Oh, here's one. You can kind of see right here, the pattern's printed on the canvas. So there's no freehand. You already have the pattern printed onto your canvas and you can just go ahead and start. And you just thread through your yarn. See if I can find the end here and give you an example. And then once you have your needle threaded, you just punch it into the fabric and move it all the way across and it will create this little pattern onto your canvas. And you can see on hers that she's been practicing and she had some really, really good spots and good runs and some other areas she was learning how to manipulate the tool. And this does require some force. So that's why I would say this is definitely for older kids. She's 11. I would say maybe eight and nine and up would be ideal for this because it does require some force. And of course, you don't want to punch through onto any body parts on the other side because your needle is kind of sharp. Here's what the back looks like. You know, we just have to trim off some of the excess, but it's a pretty easy and simple project and a lot of fun. And it looks really pretty when it's all done. She really liked it. So that's why we got the other set. It's just a really great way to start embroidery, but it's not as complicated and much, much easier. This last one is kind of a bonus because I think it's really important to look at the things that you probably already have in your closet. This is Battleship. You guys know how to play Battleship. So that's not the point of showing you, but more so to look at what you have at home. Things like this work really well for fine motor practice. And I think that this is actually smaller than the real one because the larger size one has a little bit bigger pieces. So this is the grab and go version. This can be found at five below for $5. It's Battleship. It's actually the travel size. It's recommended for ages seven and up. And you get the same pieces that you would in Battleship, except these are super, super, super tiny. Like I don't even, they're, they're even hard for me to pick up. You can see how small those little pegs are. And so games like this that you might already have will also work fine motor. So in Battleship, you know, you're supposed to place all these little pegs into your little pegboard here. And these are so incredibly tiny because it is the travel version that it's really working those fine motor muscles. So even placing them in here when you're playing the game, or maybe you're not even playing the game, maybe you're just working on fine motor and placing all of these little pegs into the board for practice. So this is a good cheap one. You can also get this on Amazon if you don't have a five below near you. So I will, it might just cost a little bit more. So I'll put that one down there for sure. So look around and see what games you already have in your house and just make a note to bring them out for some and fine motor practice if that's what you need. But this one's really good. I actually think this is one of the better travel games that I've seen. I just like the size and it's really compact and the price was really, really good for $5. I'm gonna put another video up here on screen for you to check out next. I will see you over there. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.